Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So, come back to our next lecture. Today I will uh, present the example uh, which is a shallow water equation. So, shallow water equations are, so where do we apply the shallow water equation? If you want to simulate the flood and the river, or if you want to simulate the tsunami, so in this type of application or if somehow same type of approximation can be done with some debris flow, some, some erosion and the, the mountain to, to the basement. So many, many more models. So basically the shallow water equation are to use in the community to simulate the effect of tsunami on the, the bank of the, the sea or, or to affect, uh, to see the, some type of uh, the flood in the river. So to predict, it is, uh, so it is more simple. So it is, uh, this is, uh, this can be, yellow water equation. can be approximated from the incompressible Navi Stokes Navistoke question. So I have not introduced you. It is incompressible Navistokes is that so in the beginning I have derived you the conservation of mass where we have the two variable density and the velocity. So in order to get the velocity, we have to solve the conservation of momentum. So there conservation of momentum gives the, the velocity, and there is also what we have some pressure term. So we have to somehow compute the pressure and then from that to the continuity and the, the momentum equation. So one can somehow approximate the shallow water equation. So if you have 2D Navier-Stokes equation, so the incompressible means that the density rho, what it comes uh, in the momentum equation. Momentum means density times velocity. So density rho is a constant. If it's the water, you can take it out from the derivative of uh, rho u with respect to time and the space, so because of the constant, you can throw it out. Then you get, as an approximation of that 2 d Navier-Stokes, you get the one-dimensional shallow water. From three-dimensional Navier-Stokes, you get two-dimensional shallow water. So there you have the bottom, and then you have just height, so that you get the approximation. Now here, I just present you the shallow water equation in 1D. one-dimensional case, yeah? So they, they look like the in very simple form. There are many, many other forms where you can model some type of uh, the obstacle on the, on the bottom. So it is very simple one. In simple, so what we have that you have velocity, you have height of the water, yeah. So the time derivative of velocity and it is a system of equation plus. So you have the. So I don't want to write into the derivative. I am just using the 
example from the little tracer here gets you. So this is the like velocity what you had in the in the Burger equation or the convection equation, and then what you have the derivative of u h of x is equal to on the right hand side zero zero. Yeah. So source term there is a zero. So here u is velocity of water. S is height of water and G is gravitational constant. So it is given. For example, minor is a nine point eight one. So this is a given. So this is equation for example 32.1 so we solve 32.1 with some initial conditions u0x and it's your initial velocity and initial height and boundary conditions on the boundary. Yeah. So if we have the boundary here, so if I have the domain, so if I have some type of wave here and then I have so this is A, this is B, this is a boundary and I apply the boundary condition on A and on B. Yeah. So here what this is mean so U H of T it is just like notation partial derivative of U with respect to T and partial derivative of H with respect to T or always del u by del t, this is a vector, del s by del t, and u of s, u s of x is, this is del u by del x, del u by del s by del x, yeah, this is nothing. So now we can write that into the, the again and the end of the form. So if we have this symbol, so 32.1 can be re written or expressed. So in our system, but uh, two different separate equations. So this is del u by del t plus matrix times vector. Yeah. So del u by del t plus u times this vector u times del u by del x plus z times del s by del x is equal to first component on the right hand side 0 and then so del s by del t so now this is second equation del s by del t plus so first common s times del u by del x plus u times del s by del x is equal to 0. So we can rearrange that or we can write this equation. I am just writing del u by del t plus so I keep it as it is u del u by del x is equal to I put it on the right hand side minus d z del s by del x yeah and then this equation is del s by del t plus I take this part here u del u s by del x is equal to 
I put this part on the right hand side minus h del u by del x. So it is 32.2. Okay. Now, since our method is Lagrangian, yeah, so express writing 32.2 in Lagrangian form. Yeah, because our d by dt is always is del by del t plus u del by del x. If dx by dt is equal to u. Yeah, this is always we have seen in our C scalar equation. And now dx by dt is equal to u. If it is this, the first equation is du by dt, it is the same as Burger equation in the Lagrangian form on the right hand side minus z del s by del x. And the, the second equation is ds by dt is equal to minus h del u by del x. Okay? So this is our system 32.3. And now consider domain omega is equal to a v as a computational domain yeah and then generate n particles is the same as before. All the set of are not different. They are same as before as x i is a plus i minus 1 times delta x where i is equal to 1 to n plus 1. So I think I can remove this part and delta x is equal to Delta x is equal to b minus a y n. So we have the domain here. Maybe the, we take x1 is equal to a and then x2, x3. Here this is b is equal to x of n plus 1. So it is x1 is equal to a. Yeah, this is our discrete value. And this may be the height here, for example. And we'll have also the u also. Yeah, This can be either height or also then we have two solutions. One is the height of the water level and another one is the velocity of the water level. So now the discrete form of 32.3 is now we have the particle position dxi by dt is equal to so again rho of i is equal to rho of xi rho of u of i u of xi so dxi by dt is equal to u of i du of i by dt is equal to minus z this is a constant yeah del h i by del x and d h i by dt is equal to minus u of i 
So now s of i del u by del x of i. Look at here. So this is coupled system, yeah. So in order to know because u is a function of h and h is a function of u, yeah. So we have now basically two unknown here, u and h, and we have two equations. So this system is closed, yeah. And now after having this, so you go to every point, you solve. So this is uh, equation number 32.4. So now the, so if we approximate, we approximate right hand side of 32.4. So it means we have to approximate the derivative of h with respect to x, the derivative of u with respect to h. Then once we know that one, then we have the system of ODE with the known right hand side. Then we solve the system of ODE same as before. Either we solve with the explicit Euler scheme or Runge Kutta second order. It is up to you. And now then we do the time the iteration, then we stop after we finish, uh, end of the time. So we approximate the right hand side of 30.2. This implies we get a system of three times n plus one equations. Yeah? We have n plus one points. So this is the n plus 1 equation, this is another n plus 1 equation, this is another n plus 1 equation, we have 3 times n plus 1 equation, yeah? And now this, uh, so then solve, for example, with Explicit Euler scheme. So how it is? So we do x i n plus one. It is same as before. X i of n plus delta t times u i of n. Yeah. So here x n plus one is equal to x of t n. This is discrete in the time, t of n is equal to n, 0, 1, 2, further. So this equation, ui, n plus 1 is equal to ui of n. So let me write it here better. So again, our xi n plus 1 is xi of n plus delta t times ui of n. ui of n plus 1 is equal to ui of n minus z times del h. Oh, so it is del h i by del of x at time level n. So this is already approximated at every n is time step and h i of n plus 1 is h i of n. So here also delta t also here minus delta t times h i times del u i at time level n by del x. So this is our explicit Euler scheme. This is 32. 2.5. Yeah. Now let us compute. Let us use some example. Example. So the first example we we use, just like a pool. Yeah. So number one, like a pool. Not swimming pool. So some type of pool or you have some 
where the water in somewhere you, you had some initial wave and then when the waves start moving it goes to the back and then it come back hits a wall so we'll see that in the numerics here so for example so i have the domain here so it means my omega is computational domain a v is equal to i take uh, minus 1 or 0 to 1 0 to 1 that is 0 here this 1 here initial initial condition is initially I have a zero velocity yeah and h of 0 x is 1 plus half cosine of pi x so it means I have 0 to 1 my initial condition the initially I have this type of wave here and then I need also the boundary condition so boundary condition is so I need the boundary the condition on the boundary here and here so on the wall there is no velocity u at all time t at x is equal to 0 yeah this is 0 the velocity u at for all time at 1 also 0 the velocity a is 0 velocity h at 1 is also 0 but h is equal to so at h all time at zero is I cannot put zero height because somehow if I put zero height so again it will come down so I have to put that so in the normal direction it is constant yeah it just changes in the original direction but in the vertical direction s does not change yeah so here it means I give some type of Neumann boundary condition del s with by del n is equal to 0 so I'll tell you what does it mean then second is del s by del n t at 1 also 0 at the end the height in the normal direction so I have so my normal this is n yeah this is normal on the wall and here also I have my normal direction also n yeah so this is a normal vector what is normal vector in 1d the normal vector in 1d so n is a unit normal vector so in 1d 1D it is plus 1 or minus 1. So at the, it means on this boundary n is equal to minus 1. Yeah, because n is coming this direction. So I am the so normal is always looking looking inside the domain. So it is n is equal to minus 1. So here n is equal to plus 1. So what del s by del n means? So if you look all the somehow the calculus, then you get del s by del n. This is a gradient of h times n. So what is gradient of h? Gradient of h is a vector del s by del x times for example if I am in 2D so gradient of h is del s by del x 
del s by del y in 2D. Yeah, in 3D, del s by del x, del s by del y, and del s by del z. But now, but in 1D, I don't have this part. So it means, so I have my del s by del n is only this one. Del s by del x times normal is 1. So it is 1. So this is my boundary value. Yeah? This is the Neumann boundary condition at the wall. So it means, so now if I give this boundary condition, so this is 32.5. This is 32.6 from 32.6 we get what we get that u of t0 is equal to u of t1 is 0 on the boundary but then here del s by del n means del s by del x at point zero at t at a point zero all time t is equal to zero and del s by del x for all t at position one also zero. So this is our boundary condition. Now the question comes that how do you implement the boundary condition in our approximation? So I want to include it the implementation of boundary condition implicitly when I compute the derivative, yeah. So that I will, I will present into the next lecture. So you wait that I derive the scheme together with the boundary condition, this one, yeah. So I think uh, today we stop and wait for the next lecture, which is the continuation of this part. And then after that, finally, I will show you the numerical simulation of this type of uh, wave equation, shallow water wave equation. Okay, thank you.